Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about one of our basic warm-ups. This warm-up is a great one to get uh, your muscles loose, to get blood flowing into the right areas, and to get your head thinking about what you're about to do, whether that's just jam out on your pad, play with an ensemble, or work on a section of your music. Uh, so the warm-up we're going to be doing today is called 8s. Uh, the version of this we're going to do is called 8816. So what's going to happen here is your right hand is going to hit eight times, your left hand is going to hit eight times, and then your right hand is going to get eight times twice to equal 16. So it'll be eight, eight, 16, and then we're going to reverse it, do the whole thing on the left, eight, eight, and 16. That's going to look like this. And five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So an easier way to count this instead of an eight and then sixteen is to simply count the whole thing in four. So you get phrases of four bars at a time. Uh, so what we're going to do is every time your stick hits the pad, we're going to think of those as eighth notes. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we're going to think one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then it switches. So let's try one time through counting in four. And five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. A lot easier counting it in four than eight and eight and sixteen over and over again. So let's play that through maybe two or three times. I'll count it out loud the first time and then I'll leave it to you to count along with me. Here we go. And five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. 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 And again. And five, six, seven, eight. Last time, two, and five, six, seven, eight. Good job. Hopefully if you're playing along, you're able to keep counting in four going on your own as well. That'll help out in the future too. Um, so let's talk about some things that we definitely want to do, we want to listen for, and some things to avoid while we're playing this exercise. Biggest thing is going to be consistency. Making sure that while one hand is playing, it stays consistent and doesn't start strong and then drop off. Or we don't realize that I could be playing stronger and all of a sudden we pick up the dynamic. I want to make sure that from the beginning, to the end of the phrase, it stays consistent. Same height, same velocity the entire time. Other thing is thinking about hand to hand. So we don't want to have one hand playing, uh, playing loud and the other hand playing really soft or vice versa. Something like, here are, there's an inconsistency there. So we want to make sure both hands are playing the same height, the same velocity, the same sound the entire exercise. Where this tends to run into trouble the most is on the long section, the 16 section. So we might be fine for the first part. And then here, we might kind of taper off a little bit. And we're fine. And then we lose focus, and we lose dynamic. So your goal is to keep the consistency hand to hand the entire way, not have any deviation in accents that you don't want or dynamics that you don't want. Accents are going to happen primarily as we switch hands. You might get something like right? So let's be careful not to overplay that entrance as well. Make sure that as one hand enters, it's doing the same thing that the other hand was just doing. 
So let's play it through a couple more times. Let's see if we can maintain that consistency throughout the entire exercise. Here we go. And five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So again, maintaining consistency throughout the entire exercise is really important. Doesn't matter what dynamic level you choose. You can choose to do the whole thing at tap heights. You can choose to do the whole thing at six inches. Choose to do the whole thing at 12 inches or above. Try to be consistent throughout the entire thing. Um, now there are other ways to play this exercise. We'll get into those in some later videos, but we're gonna think about adding in dynamics, crescendos and decrescendos. We can think about adding in accents that we want to hear instead of the ones we don't want to hear like we talked about earlier. We can even add in flams and 16 notes in. So this exercise, once you get the basic pattern, the 8, 8, 16, and you'll get that pretty quickly. Um, the more you play it, the, the more ingrained it gets into you. Um, the, more you get, uh, the more you get that in your head, the easier it'll be to move on to these other versions. And the reason I really like this exercise is because it really lets you um, focus on other things around you, right? So once you get the 8, 8, 16 pattern, that leaves your brain and your ears open to listen to other people around you, try to focus on matching their sound and their dynamic and making sure a vertical alignment is lining up. And that can be whether you're playing along with me here, whether you're just playing along with your metronome, which we should always be playing with, or whether you're playing in a larger ensemble setting. So getting our head out of the tunnel vision of just me playing and being able to think and focus on what's happening around me while I'm playing. That way I'm able to be a better ensemble musician. Um, so those are some good tips and tricks for playing this exercise. Tune in next time. Have a great day.